This is Wellspring, presented by Spectrum Health Zealand Community Hospital on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC. And for this Thursday, May 19th, we welcome in Sarah Dr. Slute. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Gary, and welcome to Wellspring, a live broadcast sponsored by Spectrum Health Zealand Community Hospital. Each month, May, we raise awareness about the importance of mental health and its impact on the well-being of all Americans, including children, adults, families, and communities across our nation. Joining me via Zoom this morning to talk about mental health services in Ottawa County is Lynn Doyle, Executive Director at Community Mental Health of Ottawa County. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning. It's a delight to have you on. So many people may not be aware of Community Mental Health of Ottawa County. So tell us about it. Sure. So Community Mental Health of Ottawa County is one of 46 public mental health agencies in Michigan. Uh, we're a multi-service organization. We serve people with mental illness, uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities, substance use disorder. We serve all ages, so birth through um, senior citizens and death. Um, we offer a variety of services, uh, case management, counseling, psychiatric services, um, OT, PT, speech, pretty much a full array of services to assist people with whatever issues they might be experiencing. So Lynn, what is your role, your executive director? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I, I am responsible really for the functioning of our agency, making sure that uh, we're um, serving people in the best way we can. Um, we, we hold a contract with um, the Lakeshore Regional Entity, which is uh, an umbrella organization over our region and the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. So I um, in charge with making sure that we're following those contract requirements and, um, you know, pretty much whatever else comes my way. Well, Lynn, what do you enjoy about your job? You know, you get up every morning and you say, you know, I like this. Why? Well, I've been involved in mental health for almost my entire career. And um, honestly, the thing I like the most about my current job is, is seeing the difference we can make in a person's life. Um, oftentimes when people first come to us for services and help, um, they're, they're in a bad spot. And so with um, the resources that we have available, the supports we can offer, um, in most cases, people do very well and are um, functioning in their community and achieving the goals that they set out for themselves. So it's really rewarding to see the progress that people can make. My guest today is Lynn Doyle. She is the Executive Director of Community Mental Health of Ottawa County. If you have a question, you can call WHTC at 395-1450. That's 395-1450. Gary will share it with us as this interview is airing via Zoom. Again, that number is 395-1450. So I started and I said, Lynn, that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So what are the most pressing mental health needs of our community? We are seeing really an unprecedented number of requests for services. Um, it, it correlates pretty closely with COVID. Um, so we are seeing more requests for services than we've ever seen before. Um, a lot of those are coming for um, services for kids, children, um, and that's coming at the same time uh, as we're experiencing a, a, a very significant crisis in staffing. Much like the rest of our country, um, we are really having a difficult time attracting um, 
staff in some places, uh, direct care workers, especially those people who work in our group homes. Um, our contractual providers are just um, having a very hard time attracting staff. Um, it, we're at CMH, we're also um, had, you know, noticing a shortage of, uh, for instance, master's level prepared social workers. So combined with an increased request and need for services, you've got on the other end um, a difficulty in finding staff. So we're really um, challenged right now to find you know, that balance and make sure that we're providing the services that are, are needed and being requested. Um, other, other issues really relate again to, um, COVID and, and the things that have come out of, uh, experiencing the last couple of years of isolation and increased uncertainty and anxiety. Uh, we're seeing people who are asking for services are, um, a lot sicker than we've seen in the past. Um, we've been unfortunately having to hospitalize people more frequently than we have in the past. So um, we're, we're hoping that with, you know, COVID looking like it's moving to a place where um, things are more manageable, that people will also be experiencing um, less anxiety, less trauma. You know, uh, Lynn, I want to follow up um, because I think this is a great opportunity for people who are listening. You know, you say a crisis in staffing, direct care workers, social workers. There might be somebody that's listening out there that say, that's thinking, oh, my, you know, my granddaughter or my grandson, is, you know, is a social worker and looking for a job. How would people find out about, you know, the open opportunities um, and, and is it via online? Um, let's use this opportunity to share that, that information. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So um, if you go to the county website at um, myottawa.org, um, our human resources uh, has obviously the listings of um, what's available within the county in employment. Um, our contractual partners are, are using the regular um, advertising, employment advertising platforms uh, to get their job postings out. So um, if you're interested in that type of work, I, I would direct you to um, those platforms and look for direct care workers, direct support professionals. Um, there are lots of jobs out there available. So, you know, you mentioned COVID, you know, the impact of COVID, especially on kids, um, you know, as you said, the isolation, the anxiety. So um, you're feeling the impact of that in your organization. So what is being done to address those needs? What programs are out there that people may say, I need to avail myself of what's there? Well, um, we offer a full array of services to, to kids and families um, here at CMH. We also create, um, you know, we've got partnerships that we've created throughout the years with a variety of other mental health agencies, private providers here in the county, um, you know, sort of that um, safety net that all of our agencies encompass uh, that allow people to find the right service for them based on what their needs are. Um, there are resources out there. Um, a lot of places have waiting lists, but um, if in doubt, you can always call us. You can call our access center and we can help uh, either, you know, if, if you're someone who qualifies for our services, we'll get you linked up to uh, whatever services you might need. If, if you don't qualify for our services, we can help you find alternatives in the uh, community. Uh, 211 is also a great place to start. Um, 211 really has done a good job of keeping a list of what resources are available for people in our community. So um, that is also a good place if, if someone was interested in knowing what services are available. You know, I think, you know, if we have a physical 
concern. You know, we go to the doctor, um, but mental health is so important, um, you know, and, and sometimes there's the stigma attached with that, that they're thinking that you think, oh, I can just get over it. You know I mean? If I just tell myself, you know, I can feel better. Um, that's not the case because, you know, uh, we need to address those issues because as you said, as you said, people, you know, are getting, are sicker because, you know, they have dealt, haven't dealt with, you know, the issues that have been bubbling for the last couple of years. What would you say to someone who's out there who's saying, yeah, I, I just really feel down and depressed? Mm -hmm. I think um, the first suggestion would be to reach out to your friends, to your family, to someone you trust um, and, and just explain how you're feeling. Um, you know, isolating and keeping those feelings inside it is not the best way to manage things in my opinion. So um, talking about those things with people who uh, care about you is definitely a good first step. Um, again, if you feel like you need more than that, um, you're welcome to call us and, and we can help you walk through what's available. Um, I mentioned 211. Those are all places that, um, you know, we'll spend some time with you and try to figure out what's going on and, and really help you get to where you need to be in order to get help. So in 2006, the voters of Ottawa County approved a mental health millage. Can you tell us what the millage is doing to improve the mental health of our community? Yes, uh, the millage truly is and was a blessing for us at CMH. We were at a point where our funding had been significantly decreased, we were having to, um, you know, close programming. And so that millage, those millage dollars help us to provide additional services in the community that we otherwise might not be able to. Um, that we are currently uh, supporting multiple programs, um, social rec programs throughout the county. We've got four different sites that are um, operating to provide activities and, and meaningful opportunity to individuals in our community um, to do the things that they want to do. It's important to not be isolated. It's important to get out and do things that you want to do. So the social rec programs are a good example of where we're spending millage dollars. Um, another uh, large area um, that we're using millage dollars is to funding to help support our residential programs. Um, we contract with multiple providers in the community to help support individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and mental illness. And um, those providers are uh, having a difficult time uh, having um, enough funding to pay for the overtime that they're having to provide to, to um, staff their programs. So um, two examples of, of where millage dollars are being focused and, and we're having some really good results. So Lynn, um, what if someone's listening? What's 211? Is there another way they can um, contact you um, yep. for help? Yep. Mm -hmm. They can call our access center. So we've got a toll free number. Uh, it's 1-877-588-4357. And people are welcome to give us a call. Lynn, thanks so much for the work that you're doing, the leadership that you provide, and for your entire staff to provide mental health services to our community. As Lynn mentioned, if you're listening, you can call 1-877-588-4357. Correct number that was, Lynn? Uh, until next week, Zealand Community Hospital wishes you well.